Hello lovely people, I'm K3N and welcome to week 17 of um, our weekly slow stitch project for 2024. Um, before I get into this week, I just wanted to say how wonderful it was to see so many different interpretations of the earth um, following last week's prompt. Um, quite a lot of people did ma made a round piece, you know, so they, they stitched their, their piece and then cut out cut out the round shape. That was wonderful to see. I wish I'd thought of that. Anyway, um, the other thing I wanted to say is welcome to all new subscribers that are joining us. Um, don't worry about catching up, you know, don't worry about going back to week one if you don't want to. Um, there's many different ways that you can join in at any stage. You can just jump right in with whatever week we're on. Um, you can obviously go back to week one and, and work your way forwards. What a lot of people are doing, and I think if it was me, that's what I would do, is people are, are doing the week that we're in with us, and then if it's a week that they've managed to do quickly, or it's a week where they've got enough time or whatever, then they're just going back and, and doing one of the previous weeks. So anyway, I'm just passing that on. You know, don't, don't feel that because we're on week 17, you've missed the boat, so to speak, and, and you can't join in, because you can. Um, uh, and welcome, welcome, welcome. That was the, the main point of all that wittering. Um, this week we're going to do something a little bit different and I feel like I say that quite often. But anyway, um, I want to really focus on the process this week. We've made some beautiful work, well you've made some beautiful work um, over the last few weeks, over all the weeks, you know. Um, but I really want to get back to the story, the story of the work. And, and our own stories and expressing that in the cloth. So that's why I've called this week Backstories. Um, so I'll show you in a minute when I get to my desk how we're going to do that and what you'll need. But before we do that, I've got a little bit of video to share with you. I mentioned in, I think it was last Wonky Wednesday, about the, the primroses um, in my woodland. And so I went with Stella to that part of the woods to, to have a look to see if, if there were primroses. Um, so I did it. I didn't do the whole walk because it takes about half an hour to get there. <laughs> um, but I did, you know, I made a little video. So I hope you enjoy that. So you can watch that now um, and then I'll go to my desk and we'll start on this week's project. I'm down by the stream in the valley. Um, I have to shout a little bit because I haven't brought my microphone. Plus the stream's still quite loud. Um, and I'm going to walk along here and cross the stream and go and have a look to see if the primroses are still out. I'm hoping it's not too late. All oh, the little ferns coming up, look. This is a quite a damp area here, even in high summer it's damp. There's an underground spring that comes out somewhere here into the stream. And I'm going to cross where Stella's now having a drink. And hope I don't fall in or drop the camera. Here comes my boot. Here comes my other boot. I made it. Oh dear, I've been wild boar here. Um, this area also is also always wet and I've laid all these sticks down to make a kind of bridge. I call this the wallows and further up there is a big muddy wallow and the wild boar come to keep themselves cool. There's often boar tracks here. But I'm going to go this way. Are there any boar tracks? Ah yes, there we go. Can you see them? Can you see them? Actually, I think they're roe deer. It's hard to tell because they're not clear prints. Anyway, tracks of an animal. <laughs> now we're going to go along this other side of the stream. I've only got Stella. Fred Fred didn't want to come. Um, and uh, Sirius can't make it up and down the hill anymore. I'll just show you. I'm just going to scan around where I walk down. I don't know if you can see. You see the, the skyline up there. That's the top of the hill. So I've come down that hill. <clears throat> I'm just trying to look that I don't step on anything. There's some bugle. See the blue bugle? of ferns. <clears throat> I have to watch where I put my feet. 
A, so I don't fall over, and B, so I don't tread on anything precious. Sometimes I wish I had, like, you know, hover boots, <laughs> so I didn't have to step on things. Stella knows the way. Whoops. Bit slippy there. I need to get one of those cameras that you can put on your head. You know, what are they called? GoPro or something. Excuse me, little bit of hazel. I would like to come past Wood Spurge. It's here, Euphorbia family. Its common name is Wood Spurge. It's a beautiful green, yellow acid green. And there's Stella. <laughs> oh, you've squatted down, so you must want to stroke me. Now, here's some primrose leaves, but we're not there yet. Now, I have to climb over this fallen tree. I don't do it as easily as she does. I'll step over. Lovely moss on this tree. Look at the moss. See how deep it is? I'm bury my fingers right in it. And then we have to go up here. This is another um, track that's used a lot by animals. All kinds of prints. They come through here to go and drink from the stream, I think. Or cross the stream and go up the other side. There's one kind of deer that doesn't actually drink water. It gets all its um, moisture from what it eats. Can't remember which one it is. Oh dear. Blockage. Oh look, there's a primrose already. One. One solitary primrose. Circumnavigate the blockage. I'll clear that in a minute. Just clear it gently to the side. Oh, there's some. I think actually I'm slightly late. You see there's one there. I think they're they're going going or have gone over. There's some. Some in there. But if I'd been a bit earlier, <coughs> going straight on is the old track. That would have been a mass of yellow. <laughs> oh dear. A little bit too late. There's just the odd odd straggler. Some wood spurge. I don't know what you can see. I'm sorry we missed the spring roses. Well, there's always next year. There's one little straggler. But you see all the leaves everywhere. So if I'd been here a week or two ago, it would have been a mass of yellow flowers. I'm going to step very carefully. Just to have a look what else there is. Up here somewhere, a bit later in the year, are um, a little clump of lily of the valley, Convalaria majalis, which um, in France they, they it's part of their May Day celebration. Um, Mouguet it is in, called in French. It's not actually a lily, it's convol Did I say Convalaria majalis? I um, can't even see the leaves yet. But we won't go any further that way because it's a dead end. Well, it's not a dead end, but it's overgrown. And I don't usually walk here because I don't like treading on the primroses. See all the little oak saplings? Seedlings, look. See there? There's a few. Imagine that any one of those could make a great big tree, and of course they won't all. Okay, Stells, we're going to go the other way. We're going to go up the hill. Oh, the sun's coming out. It's a bit chilly today, although I like that. I don't like it too hot. Um, just scanning your background to show you where I came from. But it's lovely with the sun just coming through the trees. Um, and our woods are quite wild. I've made tracks, or I follow animal tracks, um, or I just kind of have made tracks just by walking the same way all the time. I don't go rampaging all over the place. Um, but yeah, I feel like I'm a visitor. It's the home of the creatures that live here and the, and the trees and the plants, and I just visit. 
So I'll leave you with a little shot of the sky and um, I hope you enjoyed that. I'm sorry there were less spring roses than I'd hoped. Before I get into what you'll need, um, I just wanted to share this with you. This, this is this was two long strips of cloth, each about four inches, uh, sorry, four feet long by about six inches wide, that I made about ten years ago, I think, there or thereabouts, and I just stitched a lot of rust printed and eco printed scraps of different things together, and into these two long strips, and they were hanging from the apple tree in my garden in England. Um, for all the time I lived in England and then when I came here in 2017 one of them was hanging outside my front door and the other one was hanging on the wall at the side of the house where I do my my outside um, eco dyeing and natural dyeing and so on and the other day I was tidying up out there after the winter um, and the one hanging there on the wall fell down and so I picked it up and I looked at it and you know because they, they just hang there and I, I've looked at them um, but I picked it up and, and held it and I thought, well, I think it's time I, I did something further to these. So um, as it happened, I needed to wash dog towels. So I threw them in the washing machine with the dog towels and the two pieces that came in, when they came out, I had about six or seven pieces because they'd fallen apart um, because they're so fragile. So I've now stitched them. I won't show you the whole thing because it's now about eight feet long. I stitched them onto um, some old drop cloth just with the invisible base and um, now I'm stitching into it it's scrolled around this huge mammoth scroll that just happened to be the right size and it's very fragile you know bits fall off but I just think I mean you know for those who like this kind of thing I just think it's it's beautiful um, you see there that was all seed stitching but only little bits remain and I've got some applique pins there holding bits that are wanting to come off. So I'm now just going to stitch into this again and um, you see there that green that, that's from moss that's grown on it while it's been hanging outside. Um, I'm just going to stitch into it again and add another layer to it to its story and that, that's why I really wanted to show it to you because this week's theme is, is stories. Um, and also to say a lot of you when you buried your books were worrying about how they would fare this has been outside for 10 years and obviously it's degraded and it's changed but that was a little bit the point you know it was the letting go um, so apparently I am showing it all to you because I'm nearly to the end and here I was stitching last night and in the sheet that I backed it onto there was a darn that I did I darned a hole in the sheet so I cut a hole in the top cloth and did eyelet stitch and you know so with a cloth like this if you just make a cloth and you don't have to put it outside, you could just leave it somewhere and then revisit it later. You've maybe changed a bit or you've evolved in your style or whatever and then you can put another layer of, of work and meaning into that cloth. And I just find that so rewarding. <coughs> Excuse me. And it really, really focuses you on the process because you're not thinking about making a lovely piece to make into something, although of course we do that as well, and that's still slow stitch as far as I'm concerned. But th this doing this kind of thing is really, really slow, slow stitch because, you know, I find it a beautiful object. I've found it a beautiful object in every stage of its 10 years of life, well, longer than 10 years because all the cloths were recycled to begin with. Um, so it's, and I'm now really enjoying the stitching. So I hope that that makes sense with you. Um, that this is absolutely not about creating something to have the something, it's about the creating. So this week that's what we're going to do. We're going to make something, we're going to wait 10 years. No, we're not going to do that. That's my um, twisted sense of humour, which most of you are used to by now. So I'll put that over there, out of the way. So what we are going to do this week is take a piece of cloth with a print on of some kind um, and be informed by the print on the cloth. So as I'm being informed by what's happened to that cloth that I just showed you, we're going to take a piece of cloth that's already been printed. Now if you're an eco printer, you could take a piece of eco print. If you're not an eco printer, you can take a piece of commercial printed cloth. Um, and I'm going to use a piece of the, one of the skirts that I cut up in the um, 
you know, in the video about cutting up clothes, how I harvest cloth. Uh, I've tea dyed it. I've just got a piece of original here to show you before and after because it was a bit bright for me. So I've tea dyed and I've chosen a, a place in the print with some different colours, some different shapes. They happen to be flowers, very abstract flowers. Um, but, you know, just a little tableau, if you like, that, that pleased me. And I think it's about four by six, so it fits in my book, but obviously you can do any size you like. And as always, I've got a second layer behind. This is a bit of old tray cloth, very worn. Um, it hasn't been tea dyed, it just was that colour. So I'm going to put the two together and that's what I'm going to stitch on. So the only other things I'm going to use are um, some basting thread because I'm going to do the invisible base from Vintage Silco. And then I've chosen some of my um, old flosses that I bought when I was in England because they're on the top of the tin. And plus, I, as if I knew, <laughs> they were just the right colours. So I've got three reds, which are the reds in these flowers here. Um, and then I've got a neutral because I might want to do something in the background. I've got this bluey grey and um, I've got some greens. Those actually came out of an old tangle of threads that someone gave me a long time ago. So under, you know, needle, scissors, that's it. OK, so if you want to go and get all that stuff, then you can stitch along with me. Um, you can pause me. I can go on. I don't have to wait for you. So I've got a needle already threaded with my... Um, pasting thread. I think I'm just going to do a line up the middle and then a line each side just to hold it together. Um, I'm not going to worry about it too much, I just like it all to be held. Uh, it's this lovely soft cloth. I think I'm going to take super big stitches. Not to rush, but just because that's what I feel like doing. In fact, both the, the linen of the skirt is beautifully fine and the tray cloth is almost falling apart. When I tore it, you, you know, it, it just came apart in my hands. So a really lovely soft cloth. So try, try and choose something nice to stitch because this is all about the process. Don't, don't choose a batik or, or something like that. Um, if you have no printed cloth at all, you could um, maybe do some drawing on a piece of cloth just with, you know, a pencil or it doesn't. If you've got something that's permanent on cloth, you could use that, like a laundry marking pen or something. Just squiggle some random shapes on a bit of cloth. Um, and I would imagine or hope that most people can find something with a print on it. So I'm just going to go up this side. <coughs> And I've kind of combined two themes. I'm calling this stories, this back, this theme backstories. And story and process to me is, you know, sort of nearly the same thing. And another word that I did think of using is the word journey. I mean, and that's, that's used a lot, isn't it? Um, as a metaphorical term. Um, but that as well, it, it's just implying that... Um, the, the travelling forward, whether that's through the process of making or on a physical journey, like I just made a little journey in my woods, um, and and uh, or a story, and that can be a story that you tell, a story that's told to you, it can be a story in a book or a story in a film, you know, a story. It's about what's happening as you go along. It's not about getting to the end. You wouldn't, for example, watch the last scene of a film only, would you? You wouldn't, if you had a lovely book to read, only read the last page to find out what happens. The enjoyment is in the, the story itself, not in the, the ending. Journeys are maybe a little bit different, you know, physical journeys. I mean, my, my journey into the woods yesterday was about looking for the primroses. That was why I went. I had a, a kind of goal in mind um, because I'd mentioned it and some people had asked and you know, that all said it would be nice to see the primroses or the spring roses as I inadvertently called them. Um, so I set off with that goal in mind but it didn't mean that I didn't enjoy the walk and I didn't stop to look at other things along the way. Um, 
and actually when I got to my journey's end, you know, where the primroses grow, the primroses weren't blooming anymore apart from one or two. But that didn't mean that the story was spoiled. I hope you're understanding what I'm saying. I don't feel like I'm expressing myself very well. Um, I was talking, I went to see my mum um, the day before yesterday and um, she's an avid reader, always has been. That's probably where I got it from. I think if you grow up around people who are always reading, then you know you do it yourself, don't you? And she had a couple of books, one she'd just finished and another one that she was about halfway through. I think she probably maybe reads about a book a week. Oops. Please remind me when I'm in England that I need new scissors. Because <laughs> I forgot last time I went. Right, so I've done my basting. And now I'm just going to, um, I don't mind which way up it is. I'm just going to stitch it, whatever. And I'm just going to look and see what's drawing me. And I think I like the idea of starting with these darker areas. So I'm going to get some of my dark embroidery floss, my dark red. Pull off far too much. Uh, I'm going to butcher German again and do my best. Langes Fädchen, Faules Mädchen. That's probably awful. Apologies if you're a German speaker and that sounded awful <laughs> to your ears. <laughs> a long thread, lazy girl. Um, yeah, so my mum had these books and this one she's reading. At the moment, she's really enjoying, I can't for the life of me remember the name of it or anything about it, to be honest, but um, no, she's going to lend it to me when she's finished anyway. But she was commenting that she's enjoying the book so much that it's a shame it's so thin and it's, it's maybe an inch thick as a paperback. And that really resonated with me, you know, that she's enjoying the story so much she wished it was... A bigger book even though she's only halfway through um, because it's not about finding out what happens at the end it's about the story and I th that to me is the analogy when we make these pieces it's not about seeing the finished product it's not about finding what happens at the end it's the journey the story I'm going to stitch around these shapes I'm just going to sort of make, well, not even sort of, I'm going to make it up as I go along. I'm just going to outline stitch and this colour is a very good match so you probably can't see it but you know, you don't really need to see, you get the idea of what I'm doing, I'm just doing running stitch around the edge of this petal. I'm just enjoying the feeling of the cloth. and just following the shape. It's a little bit like, you know, colouring in, you know, when you're a child and you have colouring books, or oh, adults, there are colouring books for adults, those mandalas and, you know, that, those kinds of very complex things to colour in. I don't know if some people enjoy doing, also very meditative and relaxing. So that's all I'm doing, I'm just stitching around the edge of this flower shape. And um, although it's very subtle, the colour, you know, because the colour is so close, I can see the texture changing in the piece where I've stitched already. It's just defining the edge very, very gently. Now, if you are someone who likes to do embroidery, you know, well, you know what I mean by embroidery, you know, fancy embroidery stitches, more complex embroidery stitches, then you do you as always. Um, it's not about how you want it to look, it's about doing what you enjoy doing, which obviously part of that is how you want it to look. We don't want to make something that doesn't please us visually. Um, it's part of it, you can't, you really can't get away from that. But try not to think, certainly try not to think about how other people might see it. Don't, those 
preconceptions that people have about how things should look. And when I say people, I mean us ourselves, but also other people that you might show your work to. Um, that's always a tricky one, isn't it? Showing your work to other people. And I think particularly, it's something that spans all art forms. I think, I mean, it's certainly with um, abstract paintings, for example. Most people can see the beauty in a landscape or a portrait or something like that that looks like what it is, you know, a sort of semi-photographic representation of something. But not everybody likes or appreciates abstract art. Uh, and I think part of that is learn, it's something you need to learn in a sense. I mean, some people just look at it look at a, an abstract piece, for example, and see the shapes and the colours and the forms, or it makes you feel something. All good art should make you feel something when you look at it, I think. Um, and that can be a negative feeling. It doesn't have to be, you know, a positive feeling. It doesn't have to be beauty or joy or whatever. It can be something that, that moves you. It can be something that makes you angry. It can be something that disgusts you even. It doesn't stop the piece that you're looking at being art. Art doesn't have to be beautiful. Um, I think it's about expressing yourself and also the intention of the artist might have been one story the artist may you know will have a story to tell and when you look at it you might you might see a different story to the one the intended story and I think that's a wonderful thing as well about art I've gone round that. I'm just going to jump over there. I'm not going to end my thread and start again. I'm just going to leap straight across and go around this other one in the same way. Um, now, what was I saying about art? <laughs> what was I saying about art? And is it interesting enough that I need to try to remember so that I can finish what I was saying about art? Oh, yes, about the artist's intention. You know, the, art, the artist will have an intention in mind when they're making the piece a message maybe, or a story to tell. And then you or I might come along and look at that piece and see something completely different because we're different. We're a different person. We've got our own life experiences. We have our own likes and dislikes. We have our own prejudices, of course. We have our own preconceived ideas. And it doesn't mean that our interpretation of that piece of art is wrong. Um, I don't think. You know, I think when I when I make something that then goes and hangs in an exhibition or whatever, I put in general I put minimal information on the label deliberately. I I don't go as far as to say untitled. I know some artists just put untitled on their work and no no backstory. So you just have to take the work at face value. Um, I put, I usually have a title, but I don't say this means this, that, you know, I don't take the person by the hand and lead them through the streets of London. Sorry, Ralph McTell moment there, um, if you know that song. But that's my choice, you know, that, that's how I decide to present my work. Other people will, will give a, a, the entire backstory because that's important to them that that forms part of the work that people understand what the piece is about and I'm just stitching around my flower enjoying, enjoying the feeling of the cloth in my hand um, apologies for my sleeves well I don't know why I'm apologising for them it's, a very, it's gone cold again I think I said it when I was in the woods um, yesterday, in the video that you just saw. Um, so I've got my rainbow jumper on, as you saw, my fluffy jumper. And underneath it I've got this this um, cotton top. And it's actually third hand, uh, to my knowledge at least. <laughs> and it's falling up to pieces. I, I can't even mend it anymore. I have mended the sleeves a few times because it's got this sort of crochet trim on it look, but there it's completely coming apart. Um, but I love it because it's so comfy. And it was bought by a friend of mine in England from a charity shop for herself, and she wore it for a bit, 
and then she just um, went off it and she always came to me if she was giving clothes to the charity shop to ask me if there was anything I wanted either as clothing or you know to cut up and this top was there so I had this top and now I've been wearing it and I've had it well that must be about about eight years I would guess <coughs> but I just like it I just like it but yeah it's not very pretty <laughs> And it's too cold here for me to roll my sleeves up, so you just have to look at my manky old top. I'm sorry. So I've gone all round that one. Um, oh, I'm just going to go around that inner part of it as well. And you see the changes that I'm making to this cloth, or the additions I'm at this point, are very subtle. You probably can't even see that I've been here or done anything at this stage. I can barely see. But it doesn't matter. So I'm going to go through there to the back. And then I want to do this third one. And my thread is right up here. So I'm just going to leap over there. To, to there, the nearest point of the other flower. I'm not worrying. See, if I pull that really tight, it's going to do that. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to let it lay flat, but I'm not worrying about that. I have had some discussions with um, people here and there about the backs of works work. Because uh, I think I've mentioned <laughs> poor Mrs. Taverner before, my school needlework teacher, who was very much of the school of the back must be as neat as the front. And I can remember, even way back then, I don't know if I actually asked her why, because she was quite scary, but um, certainly thinking why, you know, why does the back have to be as neat as the front? And I think I've said this before, but in some cases you do see, like I've talked about seam pressing in conventional patchwork, you do see on the front what's happening, you know, what's happening on the back affects what you see on the front and in some forms of embroidery as well. But in, in what we're doing, the back is the back. The art is on the front. Um, and it's too, um, unless you're doing pajagi, of course, and then the art's on both sides now. Um, So yeah, it's uh, it's too. I can't remember what it was too. It's it's not relevant to me what happens on the back. And uh, the piece I made. Um, there's a little video of it on my Instagram. It's called "Everything's Connected to Everything Else." It was a very large wall hanging that I made two years ago for the last round of exhibitions with my group CQ West. When I say my group, it's not, you know, I don't own the group. I mean the group of which I'm a member. It's just shorthand to say my group. Um, on that piece, there was a lot, a lot, a lot of very heavy stitching. And not only running stitch, you'll be amazed to hear, but there was stacked running stitch and blanket stitch and eyelet stitch. Did I do French knots? There was certainly seed stitch. Um, and of course a lot of running stitch and I deliberately and intentionally didn't put another backing on to hide all that and the back was some people would say a complete mess <laughs> all my knots you know that's another thing in, in conventional embroidery if you go and learn properly they will teach you not to make knots I'll come back to where I started I'm just going to go back down and jump over because I haven't done these two petals, do you see? I'm right over here, but I need to do those. I think I've got just enough thread. I'm just going to jump straight over there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they will teach you not to do knots. That's the proper way. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. I feel like I need to say it every time. I'm absolutely not criticising anybody for doing things differently. I'm just talking about slow stitch. And even within slow stitch, there are many, many different ways to do things. 
because it's not about the product, it's about the process. And it, the process is so important that it must be something that you enjoy doing. So if you enjoy not having knots in your work, you know, and finishing your thread ends off properly, comme il faut, as they say in French, as is necessary, um, then you do that. But um, <clears throat> it's not something that should cause stress. Don't don't have an invisible Mrs. Taverner sitting on your shoulder. I feel I'm very mean to that poor lady. She did. I must have learnt things from her. You know. I've just about managed to squeak to the end with my bit of thread. So I'm just going to take it through to the back. And I'm just going to do a couple of back stitches just to hold it. And I'm going to leave it. And I think I'm even just going to leave that like that. All right. So next I'm going to have a look at what else I might want to do. I think I'm going to have this dark red. And I'm going to do something with the dark red petals. I'm using, by the way, sorry, I should have said at the beginning, I, I use nearly always, not always, but nearly always two strands of six stranded floss. It's just, it fits in my needle nicely, it runs through the cloth nicely, and to me, I like the stitch definition with two strands. But you can mix it up, that's another thing you could do if you were doing this, rather than doing fancy, you know, different stitches. I mustn't call them fancy stitches, because... But you, I hope you know what I mean. You could vary the thicknesses of your thread, and that will, and that will give you different textures. Um, for many years, I didn't stress, that's too strong, but I kind of felt that I should do more than running stitch. Um, and the occasional bit of all the other stitches that I mentioned. I'm going to do something different with the red. I'm just going to do big stitches, I think, as if it were the veins of the petals. So I'm just going to do a great big stitch like that. You see? I put it too tight because I don't really want it to pucker. And then I'm going to come back down to nearly where I came out with that. Oh, you see, that's what happens when you leave your thread ends. They pull through to the front sometimes. I'm just going to do that kind of thing. It's kind of long and short stitch, but it's not really. It's just stitches that happen to be longer and shorter. <laughs> what was I saying? Can't remember. Can't remember. If it was important, when I'm editing, I will um, flash something on the screen. So I'm going to say, look up in case something's flashing on the screen. Apologies if there isn't. <laughs> and I think that for that will do. Very simple. I'm going to jump up here to this other darker. Just a little nub in the weaving, but we won't mind that. Just going to jump across to this one and do the same thing again. Just simple. And talking about stories gives me the perfect opportunity to mention the wonky donkey. <laughs> I'm not going to read it to you. Some very naughty people in the Facebook group have been trying to get me to read it to you because there is a video. Um, I'm going to jump down here to this dark red petal down here. I'm just jumping all that way like it's a stepping stone over my stream. Um, yeah. Wonky. You know we have Wonky Wednesday and we talk about Wonky being fine and we embrace the Wonky and all the wonkiness. Um, and a few people have mentioned in the comments here and there that there is a child's book called The Wonky Donkey. And I'd never heard of The Wonky Donkey. And um, I looked it up and, you know, it's a lovely child's book, really funny. And then a lovely lady who's in our fi private Facebook group, sent me a private message, a lady called Cher, hello Cher, um, with a link to a video on YouTube where there's a, a woman called the Scottish Granny, that's her YouTube name, reading the wonky donkey to her grandson. I think it's her grandson. It's a baby, it's hard to tell. <laughs> uh, 
Um, so I watched it and it is hilarious. And, uh, you know, it's just the, the most hilarious thing about it, I think, is that the, the Scottish granny finds it hilarious. Uh, so I strongly recommend you going to look up the Scottish granny reading The Wonky Donkey. Um, but I'm not going to read it to you because I don't think I could. I don't think I could read it. Now, having seen the, and heard the Scottish granny reading it, I would just literally crack up and not be able to. And that is why people, that's why I say they're naughty, because that's what they want to happen. <laughs> they want me to read it and be here crying with laughter and not being able to read it. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, and you can't make me go watch the Scottish granny. I could not improve on that. So I'm going to put that in my oats tin, that bit of red. And I'm going to get some of the... I'm going to put that there in case I need it again. Can you see where there is? It's just there, you know. My little bits that I pulled two off, so there's now four left. I'm going to take the, the more pinky, pinky shade and get a bit of that. Um, yeah, the Scottish Granny. So yeah, I um, highly recommend it if you want a good laugh. And the baby is just sat. Well, it's quite a young baby. Uh, you know, when it was when it was filmed, I do wonder what that baby's going to make of it when that baby grows up and realizes that she or he was on YouTube. Anyway, um, yeah, the baby stays completely straight faced throughout, obviously, because it's a baby it doesn't know what's going on. <laughs> So you've got this very serious looking baby and this, this lady laughing literally till the tears run down her face. Um, that is the thing with babies, isn't it? You know, sometimes you talk to babies and you do the baby talk maybe or you say something amusing or, you know, you're trying to make them giggle or laugh or whatever. I'm just wondering what to do now. I want to do something a bit different with these but I can't think what. I'm going to do a very rudimentary satin stitch, I think. And I'm going to do it up the petal, in the direction of the petal. I'm just going to do my stitches reasonably close together. Like I say, rudimentary satin stitch. So I'm just doing long stitches. So I'm coming back where I can you see. I don't think I've ever done satin stitch before. Well, I've done it before, but I mean here on YouTube. <laughs> so I come up there. Let me see where my thread wants to lay and go down there. And get caught around the edge of my cloth. And I'm going to go back to the base of the petal. I'm just going to do that, just following the, the lines of the petal. Yeah, you know, when you're trying to make babies laugh and you're, you're pulling out all your funny faces and you're making funny sounds and, you know standing on one leg and doing everything you can to make that baby laugh like it's your life's work to make that baby laugh and that baby just looks at you like what on earth are you doing <laughs> everybody know what i mean by that whoops it's happened i've gone through a loop that's because i was very and now i've pulled that all out of true doesn't matter i've pulled it back into true Babies. Tough crowds, babies. They have no concept of being polite. <laughs> they just do themselves. They don't need to be told you do you, it's what they do. I keep going through that big long loop, you see. That's that's Mrs. Taverner getting back at me. Teaching me a lesson. So maybe one more there, and we'll call that one covered with the stitching. And then I'm going to go, do you know what, if you want to go through the loop, just go through the loop. I'm not bothered. I'm not bothered one jot. I'm going to jump back down here and do this little one underneath as well. It would have made more sense to start there, but you know, I didn't plan ahead. This is a journey of discovery. I'm going to do the same thing over that one. Through the loop again on the back. <laughs> but you see, I laugh. One should laugh. 
one should laugh more often. Laughing is good for you. I think it's even scientifically proven that laughing is good for you. I do remember years, years and years ago, I was in sales. That's the worst job I ever had. And I've had some, when I was a student, I've had some quite unpleasant jobs, let me tell you. Um, but anyway, this was, when I was very young, I think I was 18 or something, so it was back in the dark ages. I had to phone people up, and don't, please don't judge me, you know, I was very young and um, I needed the money to, to study. And a friend introduced me to this, and now you're all wondering what it was that I did that was so awful. It was double glazing. It was calling people at home and trying to get an appointment for a double glazing person. And I only did it for a few weeks because I just couldn't stand it anymore. Um, what was the point of this story now? Oh, dear me. Uh, nope, can't remember the point of the story. I'm sorry. Now what I could do now is pause the camera and go back and see what the point of the story was, but I don't know if I want to do that or not. Doesn't really matter probably. I was selling double glazing, I was calling people at home, I'm now trying to remind myself. Do you see, I do think my brain is getting full, and I know that's not really a thing. Your brain is not like, you know, like my SD cards onto which I save my videos. They've got so many giga do flips, whatever they're called, of memory and you have to pay attention because they get full and then you have to get another one. Y your brain's not like that, I don't think. I'm not a neuroscientist, but <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's not how the brain is. Um, if you are a neuroscientist or you know, please tell me. But um, I feel that, and it's probably getting older as well, I am kind of, because I've always been very lucky that I've got a brain at all, <laughs> no, that I've got a brain that can remember stuff. And that, I think that's just luck, you know. Uh, there's not much shed there, so I'm going to end that off on the back. Because <clears throat> if I use it to jump the next place, there won't be room at all. Um, not in the thread for any more stitches like my brain, there's no room at all. Which is why I then had <coughs> the idea of getting a notebook to write things down in. Because in the comments, people say, um, people, you know, like last week, I think it was, I was asking about words for potato. I seem to be doing something different on this. I've just gone straight up the middle. Well, let's go with it. We don't have to satin stitch all of those because we satin stitched those. I'm going to do that, those three big stitches, like that. And with a tiny bit of thread that's left to me, I'm going to just couch them down a little bit, just randomly here and there, just for fun. Just because it occurred to me. And I think I'm just thinking of a way to keep those long stitches in place, but it will just give a slightly different look. So all I'm doing is just taking a couple of tiny stitches over the top of them. I don't think I've got enough thread. We'll see. We might just get away with it. So, yeah, so I had the idea of getting and finding a notebook to write things down in because people will say, you know, the word for potato in I don't know how many different languages I've now got. I'm collecting, I'm collecting words for potato. People will say, oh, have you, if I talk about a book, people will say, oh, yes, I like that book. And if you like that book, you'll like this book. And it might be a book I don't know. So I want to, um, you know, look it up and maybe try and get a copy and read it. But the thing is, when I'm sitting going through the comments, reading all your lovely comments, um, I think, oh yeah, I must look that book up, and then I'll sit for another half an hour, and after the end of that half an hour, I've completely forgotten the book that I was supposed to look up, for example, um, and I can't find in the comments where it is, because you're all so lovely and generous with your comments that there are, you know, quite a few of them, which is lovely. Please don't stop commenting, just because you're worried that <laughs> there's too many comments. I love you commenting. Um, and a lady the other day, posted a few different comments 
and the feeling I got was that she was watching the video and as she was watching she was commenting on you know something I'd said at that point in the video so she ended up with sort of three or four comments and at the end she said oh I'm sorry I'll stop wittering now and I said I'm absolutely the last person to judge anybody for wittering please don't stop wittering <clears throat> I quite like the look of that with the, do you see that and the little stitches over so I'm going to do that again on these last two pink ones so that's why um, on Friday there was a video of me making a commonplace book because I'd heard of commonplace books some time ago when I uh, two or three years ago when I first first started making journals um, no I first started making sort of paper mixed medias type journals I've been making stitch journals for a long time um, 15 or 20 years probably so uh, when I first started making junk journal, art journal, you know, that kind of journal, I came across this type of book because librarian that I am, I had to look up all the types of book and one of them was this commonplace book. <clears throat> and so when I was thinking about finding a notebook to write down book recommendations, quotes, you know, bits of poetry, all the words for potato <laughs> all that kind of thing I thought oh yeah commonplace book so that's why I thought I'd just make one I had those book covers that I showed in the video if you haven't seen it I've got it here because I carry it around with me the idea was to make a little tiny portable one that I could take everywhere with me but it turned as my books always do into this big big thing and it's just a couple of book covers with glued to a bit of linen a bit of old upholstery linen so it's got a floppy, flippy spine. So you can see me waving it in your face. And then I've tag tabbed all the pages with different headings, people, ideas, books, poems, and so on. Um, I've put all those in alphabetical order, librarian that I am, except for miscellany, which I've put at the back. And I'll just show you quickly. Look up, I'm showing you something. See, look, there's my words for potato <laughs> so far. Um, so if there are any words for potato that are not on that list please tell me in the comments because I you know still got room so yeah quotes I wrote um, I wrote a quote that somebody put on their earth from Arthur C Clarke how inappropriate to call this planet earth when it is clearly ocean so this is basically my SD card for my brain so yeah, I was quite pleased with it. There's, if you haven't seen Friday's video and you're interested, I'll show you how I made it. Back to this. Because it is interesting, you know? Everything is interesting. Everything is interesting. And you kind of don't even know what you're going to find interesting sometimes. Oh, I said gonna. My grandmother would tell me off for gonna, going to, find interesting, until you come across it sometimes. And that also is in a story, isn't it? You know? I mean, I have favourite books that I read, read and reread again and again and again my favourite book ever since I was about 12 or so I think when I read it for the first time is Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte in case you're interested and I don't know how many times I've read that but I've read it a lot a lot of times um, so there are books that you read read and reread there you go I did my tongue twister again um, because you love them so of course you know what's going to happen so you read them it must be you must be reading it for a different reason in that case I'm going to leave him because he's right on the edge that that petal so I'm going to just stop there with that and it's the same with films you know I was talking a little while ago about Tom Hanks I just snipped my back cloth and oh, no, I snipped my basting stitches doesn't matter doesn't matter um, and 
Wood, when he was the voice of Woody in Toy Story, and oh, it was to do with the moon, I think, because he was in the film about Apollo 13, you know, the story of Apollo 13. Um, and someone in the comments mentioned Castaway, you know, the film Castaway with Tom Hanks, when he's cast away, unsurprisingly, that's not a spoiler. If you haven't seen it, I would recommend it. So then I had the desire to watch it again. I'm just trying to untangle my thread even though I think I've seen that two or three times already. So we, Lily was home for the weekend and um, we sit in the evening and um, watch something usually. Hans and I have things that we watch together, Lily and I have things that we watch together, if it's just Lily and I. And if Joey's home, which is much rarer these days, my son, um, then we have to find something that all four of us like, which is always a big challenge. Um, we do also talk to each other sometimes, isn't we're not completely square-eyed, but... Um, and we sometimes talk during films as well, which I know annoys some people. Um, you know, about things that are happening in the film. So anyway, what was I saying? Yeah, so I suggested, Lily was home, that we watch Castaway. So we did, and I really enjoyed it. And I think if you see things, if you watch things, um, again, maybe a few years later, you, you've changed maybe in that time and you see different things in the film and, and, and in books. You know, there are some books that you can, I'm going to say it again, read, read and reread that um, you see different things every time you read. Every time you read them, you get something else from the story, either because there was so much in the book that you couldn't possibly take it all in the first time or... Um, because you've changed, so your perceptions change. And that's, well, that's maybe a little bit what I was saying about art as well, you know, about the artist's intention might not be what you see when you look at the work. You might read a book and think, oh, well, I read that when I was, you know, such and such an age, especially if, like with Wuthering Heights, I read it as a, a, young, teen, a young teenager, not even a teenager. Obviously, as an adult woman with all my life experiences, I'm going to have a different perception. Um, what am I going to do now with my big green blobby flower? What I'm seeing in it are the, all these lines, these darker lines. So I think I'm just going to emphasize those a bit, sort of a bit abstracty. Just stitch over the lines here and there with bigger stitches. Let's do bigger running stitches because I did tiny ones on the dark red bits. So I'm just going to go round and round. I have noticed recently, I was telling, talking about this with my mum yesterday because she was you know, showing me her book she was reading and saying she wished it was longer. Um, again, this is such a good colour match. I can hardly see, but I'm just doing running stitches that are maybe not quite a quarter of an inch long but, you know, bigger than I, norm than I normally do and bigger than those. And I'm just, wherever I see a line that speaks to me, I'm stitching along it. Um, yes, I've got a few books on my nightstand because I mostly read um, Last Thing at Night in my bed and sometimes first thing in the morning and sometimes in the um, wee small hours of the morning when I've woken up and I can't get back to sleep. I find it's much better to read uh, a physical book than um, start looking at your, your phone or your tablet or whatever. Although I do know some people say they listen to me when they can't sleep when I put them to sleep and I take that as a compliment. Um, but so on my nightstand I think I've got four books currently that I'm reading at the same, well not at the same time, I'm not, you know, I don't have a book or four books laid out in front of me and you know, you know what I mean, I'm being silly. Four books that I'm part way through. Um, and I never used to read like that, I always would read a book at a time. Sometimes with if it's non-fiction books. Like one of the books is The Pocket, and that will come, the, the Pocket video, at one point. I keep talking about it, but it will come, I'm working on it. So, I mean, that that's a non-fiction book, so 
you can dip in and out of it. Um, and non-fiction books, I don't necessarily start at page one and, and go through till page whatever, I jump about. Um, so there's that one. And then there's a couple of novels, both of which were recommended to me by people here in the comments. One is a novel called Sirius. I can't remember who wrote it now. Some of you will be shouting at me. Um, it's a science fiction novel from, I think, the 50s about a dog called Sirius who has the mind of a man or who, you know, can think like, like a person. And it was recommended to me because my big dog, as many of you know, is called Sirius after the dog star, Canis Major. Um, and I think I know why I don't want to finish that because I was warned by the I think it was a, a woman who recommended it I was warned by the person who recommended it that it was you know quite quite a tough read um, and I'm beginning to sense where it's going where the story's going and my big dog is quite old for his breed he's 12 and a half and the average age for his breed is between 11 and 13 um, so he's obviously coming to the end of his let's call it his story <laughs> and I think that's why I can't finish that book um, although I do want to you know part of me wants to find out what's going to happen and the other part of me thinks well <laughs> not sure I'm up to it anyway and then there's another book and I don't really know why I can't finish that one that was also recommended to me called um, the dictionary of lost words and that's a beautiful book I'm really loving it and I think I will just pick that up and get on with it <laughs> and finish it because I think I'm maybe two-thirds of the way through I'm just hopping about here wherever I see one of those lines that I feel I want to stitch on I'm not really planning anything. Um, so, yes, I don't really know. And then other times, it's like my mum with her book. There's a book that's so... You're enjoying... Pardon me. You're enjoying so much, you don't want to finish. And you start getting towards the end and you, you can feel that there's only a few pages left. And um, you don't want to finish because then it will be over. If you know, if you if you understand what I'm talking about, if you can relate, please, you know where to say it, because I so love other people saying yes. You're not the only weirdo. <laughs> well, we're all weirdos in our own way. What is weird? You know, what even is weird? What is normal? What is weird? Maybe that's a subject for another video. Um, we'll stitch a weird piece. <laughs> So this, what I'm doing here, is very subtle, because again, like I said, the colour is very similar. But I do like the way it's given kind of a sense of movement to that. That what was quite a blobby flower shape. Just by following the lines. Can you see? So, was that four? Did I mention four? No, there's a fourth one. can't remember what the fourth one is. Oh yes, I can. It's um, Entangled Life by Merlin Sheldrake, which is a book I've read twice already, and I'm on my third reading. So, that's not an unfinished book, and that's about uh, fungi, mushrooms, fungus, funguses, <laughs> as I used to say when I was little. Uh, I'm sure lots of people did. Um, right, that's enough of that. Oh, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm looking at these little circles. I think I'm going to do a little, a little cross in each one, just because I feel like it. The green, the green ones. Just a cross stitch. I don't yet know if I'm going to do it in all of them. We'll see. 
Yes, and so I'm I'm reading that again, just if I feel like reading it. So yeah, I would love to hear if people are who who read are serial readers, <laughs> or um, you know what would you call people that read lots of books at once? Multiple readers, multi readers, and. Um, if you're in a book that's really gripping you, that you're really loving, are you desperate to get to the end? Or do you think, oh, I'm enjoying the story so much, I just want to take it slowly, so I'm going to, you know, ration myself to five pages a day or something? Um, Do you have favourite books that you read again and again and again? All of these things I would like to know, if you would like to tell me. And books, books versus Kindles. Now, from an environmental point of view, apparently, I did a bit of reading. A Kindle is more environmentally friendly than a book in terms of its carbon footprint. And I'm talking about a new book. Now, I do try to buy, where possible, second-hand books. Um, you know, for, I mean, for reading. I'm not talking about books for... Well, I also obviously buy old books for journal making and so on, but I'm now talking about for reading. Um, or, you know, my mum will get second-hand books from her friends. That's quite a not a black market, it's not a black market, it's a you know, perfectly legal market. But for, for books in English in France, where, here where we live in France, um, my mum doesn't read French. She has a few words she can get by, you know, she speaks sort of everyday French enough to, to live her life here. But um, she reads in English, and as do many of her friends. So they have books sometimes that people bring from England and then they all get passed around, you know. So that's good. So that means one book is read by multiple people and probably they're second-hand books to begin with. They've bought them in charity shops in England. Uh, but yeah, apparently I read somewhere that a Kindle, the, the carbon footprint of, the, of a Kindle, I might be wrong. Don't shout at me if I'm wrong. I'm just misremembering. But it's, some, it's equivalent to something like the production of... Um, for in the lifetime of you owning that Kindle, as if you read 25 paperbacks a year. So I don't know what the lifetime of a Kindle is. But the bottom line was that for the, you know, the, the reader of books who reads more than that, and what's that, it's about one every two weeks, isn't it? Um, a Kindle is more environmentally friendly. Having said that, I do not own a Kindle. <laughs> um... There's also some grey dots down there, and I've got this bluish grey, or greyish blue. So I'm going to do something with that, I think. I don't know what yet. We'll see. Oops. I might, do you know what, I might do some French knots. I might do some French knots just to echo those round shapes. Yeah, but just because I pref I'm old school, I prefer to read a physical book of paper and, you know, whilst I appreciate that if you have a Kindle, you can have it in how many thousands of books. My daughter Lily has a, a Kindle type device. Um, but she's a lot younger than me, obviously. <laughs> Um, I don't think it's an age thing. I have friends who are my age or older who use Kindles. I, I know about the number of books that are in the world. I try not... To, I, I don't buy new books very often. I bought the pocket book new, you know, the book about pockets. Um, so tell me, Kindles or books and your thoughts on the subject? I sometimes tie myself up in knots trying to make these decisions. I, I have it with cloth as well, although with cloth for me I'm going to do three wrap French knots. 
cloth and it's pretty simple. I try to use old cloth wherever I can. I don't buy new cloth. Um, when's the last time I bought new cloth? I can't even remember. Um, even for clothing, apart from my underwear. Um, all my clothing is thrifted. Uh, the only new fibre I buy is wool for knitting. And most of the wool I buy for knitting I buy from a company here in France, a mother and daughter company, where they spin their own. It is synthetically dyed, not naturally dyed. Um, but, you know, we, we can't not have an impact on the planet. We're back to planet Earth. We can't not. But I think we can make informed decisions and choices. And Sorry, I'm now... Completely off topic. So yeah, I'm just trailing some French knots through here. Just to kind of give another dimension to those little circle, circle-ish circle shapes in the same sort of colour. Um, talking of circle shapes, I had quite a few requests last week because I showed the earth piece with bubbles, you know, fabric bubble wrap. And I'd sort of said in passing that I had stitched a few by hand and it was very time consuming and so on. I've had quite a few people ask about that, so I will do that. And in fact, I was going to do that this week. That was going to be this week's. But then various things. What happens is things come into my brain or um, or with chatting to people in person, you know, or, or my friends or my family or whatever, um, or something I read, or, and quite often feedback that I get from you all. And that makes me think, oh, I want to do that, you know, that that must be this week's project. And then that's, that's why I haven't planned everything in advance. I think I've said that before, so that it's in some way relevant rather than, you know, it's not, there's no syllabus. <laughs> there's no exams at the end either, you'll be happy to hear. Um, right, so that's enough French knots. Uh, I'm gonna finish that off. And while I've got this bit of gray, I think I'm just gonna go up here and do something with this flower. Can you hear Stella? She's now snoring. <laughs> Dear. <laughs> A lady said the other week that, um, before I'd said it was Stella snoring, uh, what should I do here? I'm going to sort of hash them. I'm going to do long stitches across one way and then the other way. Do you know what I mean? I like make hashed lines. Um, that she could hear the snoring and she thought it was her cat. It wasn't, it was Stella. So I'm doing them quite far apart, but we'll see how it looks. We can always put some more in the gaps. No, my tummy's rumbling, but I don't think you can hear that, so I don't really need to mention it. I could have blamed it on Stella snoring, couldn't I? If you could hear it. I'm going to just go in the gaps, I think. And I think also, I don't, have I ever done, it's a bit like darning, isn't it? Only I'm not weaving in and out, I'm just going over the top. It has the look of darning especially since I went one way then the other. I think I like that, I think I'm going to do that again. Do the long ones, which way did I do it? Yeah. No, I did the cross ones first. I'm going to go back through. I'm not unthreading and pulling back, I'm just going to go back through. Oh, it's caught, but never mind. So there's a teeny tiny little thread of stitch caught there. So I'm doing the short ones on this petal, which are the crossways ones. I'm doing three, and then I'm going to do some long ways ones. Also three. I 
and then I'm going to go and put in some more crossways ones again. If you work that over a bigger area you could just keep going back and forth and filling in the gaps. I might have a play with that. I can have a play on my um, my long scrolly, scrolly thing that I showed you. It's quite an interesting effect. So I'm going to go and do it here again. Crossways. Um, the other thing that I'm working on as well is the, the sock knitting. I have not forgotten. Um, but I'm trying to um, break down what I do when I make a pair of scrappy socks into steps, you know, and try and plan it so that I can present it in an understandable and manageable way and not take weeks telling you how to knit a pair of socks. But that will come. And then two more crossways ones, and I just manage it, I think, with this bit of thread. Huh. And also, I quite like that I've got three that are darker and those three as they are, so I'm going to stop there with that. But that is a stitch that I do want to explore more further. Right, so the final thing I want to do is get my neutral colour and do a bit of something in the background, probably seed stitch, that's my kind of go-to for background texture. Oops, come on, two strands. And I pr I'm not going to fill in the whole background with it. I'm just going to do some random seed stitch, maybe little clusters of seed stitch in some of the spaces. Um, this idea of stitching over a um, printed piece of cloth is not new. Um, Sorry, I can't turn my needle. <laughs> um, I've had no trouble so far today. There we go. Uh, in hand embroidery, I'm sure. I mean, I've seen other people doing it, of course. Um, but it's something, and I don't think I made it up, but when I was teaching quilting, I was talking about the bubbles, I mean machine quilting, to put an all-over quilting design, if you're a quilter, and a free motion quilter, and you're trying to think of ideas for quilting designs, what you can do is make your backing fabric a, a piece of printed fabric. Um, or even if you're hand quilting, you know, if you were making, if you're doing quilt as you go um, blocks, make your backing a, a print and then quilt from the back, you know, to stitch from the back like like this, maybe not as intensive, but just running stitch outlining the flowers. And then when you turn it over, you'll have running, you know, you'll have flowers, won't you? Could do that. Used to do it when I was doing free machine embroidery. Um, not mach not uh, quilting, I mean, free machine quilting. I'm just gonna do that. It's almost like the little seeds are coming out of the flowers. Few up there. There's six. I can't have an even number. I like an odd number. I'll do an extra one. Um, no, I'm going to. And I'm not worrying about wasting thread. I know some people say on the back you mustn't waste thread by putting long loops because it's a vintage thread. And you know, still doesn't deserve to be wasted. But for this exercise, I'm just jumping. I'm not stop starting. Put three in there. Um, I want some down here. That is a really long way to jump. Um, so I could do. I could either end off and go back down there, or I could do something in between. I think I'm going to do that. Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do a few French knots in here, 
with um, this neutral thread. Three, four, I'm going to do four wraps, slightly bigger ones. And just as a change from the seed stitch and just to get myself where I want to be. This also, this whole exercise, if you're stuck for an idea, you know, sometimes we, we can't, we want to stitch, but we don't know what my go-to for that is, my meditation scrolls. There's always one that I can just pick up and start stitching on. But sometimes you want to do something different or, you know, something a bit more elaborate. Um, you can just find yourself a little print of cloth like this and just do this, just play. One, two, three. Four. I forgot I was doing four. It's just like colouring in. Four. And now I'm going to do some seed stitches again in here. Maybe slightly smaller ones just because the space is smaller. Um, some of the newer subscribers, um, a couple of people have commented that they didn't know that there were stitching videos. There's a playlist called, I think it's called Slow Stitch or Slow Stitches. It's not the weekly project playlist, um, but it's more, it's got the introduction to Slow Stitch video that I did way back in November, I think it was. And there are also a few different videos, short, shorter videos, where I'm exploring the different stitches. So I think there's a running stitch, seed stitch, blanket stitch, um, eyelet stitch, uh, couching. So there's a few, I think they're all each, they're each about 15 or 20 minutes long. So if you haven't seen those, do I'll put a link to that playlist down below. Um, if you want to see, you know, specific stitch videos. Right. So as I come down here into this bigger space, I'm just letting the seed stitches get gradually bigger. Into this space here. At the bottom right. Stells! Sorry, I hope I didn't make you jump. She's licking her feet. And they're getting a bit fluffy again. Her hair grows much quicker in the spring than it does in the rest of the year. So I think she needs, she doesn't seem like very long ago that she went to the groomer. Um, she's cockapoo, so she doesn't shed, she has to be clipped. I must look up whether she's how long ago it was, although it doesn't really matter how long ago it was, if she needs it, she needs it. But yes, yeah, she gets these hairy Grinch feet, my son calls them. And um, then when she goes in the woods, she gets, you know, st stuff in them. But if she keeps on, she'll make them sore. So when I finished, I'll go and have a look at her feet. I do give them a little wipe with a little towel, which is now clean because I washed all my towels, like I said, my dog towels. Right. Um, I'll look if she's actually got anything in there. Unpleasant, like a thorn. There we go. So, and of course it's all out of true and so forth because of course I tore it, of course, of course. I shall show you. Can you see? Can you see? Can you see? Um, so I've done my very dark red, which you can't hardly make out around there. Those long stitches in those petals. Those long stitches I stitched, I couched. I did some satin stitch. Um, I did this kind of hash, hash stitch. I made a hash of it. <laughs> Sorry. Um, some French knots, some cross stitches. Here I just did some bigger running stitches on the, some of the lines and then my seed stitch to finish off. So that's my piece for week 17. So I'm going to get the book. <coughs> the 
her stitch journal. She's got bits on it. She's getting bigger and bigger. Oops. With its big clunky end. Um, there's plenty to There's the next page. <clears throat> and I'm going to put it into my book. Now, um, yes, excuse me, I just have to pause one minute. Well, it won't be any time at all for you. Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. Well, not that you had to wait all that time for me, that it just took me to do what I had to do. Um, I'm going to stitch my piece into my book. Just threading my needle and tying a knot. Um, come on. There we go. So, do I need the giant paper clip or can I manage? I'm not sure. I'm going to try without. Now, <clears throat> You don't have to do this. You don't have to do anything that I say, of course, ever. But for me, this is the point of this exercise. So I'm going to stitch this page into my book. And instead of just stitching it along one, one edge, like I usually do, I'm going to stitch it probably around three edges because it will be a bit complicated to stitch it there. But I'm going to stitch it. Let's turn it back the right way around. Please be all looking at me. Um, look up. I'm going to stitch it that way up. And then I'm waiting for <laughs> the screams. <laughs> um, because on the back here, this is the story. This is, this tells the story of the stitching. This shows all where we jumped, where I jumped across the metaphorical stream to get from there to there. Um, where I began and ended my threads, where uh, when I did my seed stitching, for example, um, up here, you know, it does look like seed stitching, but of course it's not as regular as the seed stitching on the other side because I was concentrating on the other side with my placement and so on, and the back just happened as it happened. So the back is the story, hence the theme backstories. So I'm going to sew it into my book and I'm going to sew it so you can't even see the front. That's what I'm going to do. Now, because I find this beautiful, I, I like the front, I'm not saying I don't, but to me, this is where the meaning is. The meaning's in, in the process that I made and you know the story that that tells. So I'm going to do that like that. I'll be very interested to see how many of you do the same. <laughs> um, so I'm going to, st I'm can't, I can't sew there, it's too close to the spine. I'm just going to sew it on these three sides, like I said. I could have put that knot on the front as well, but anyway, I've done it without thinking. It doesn't matter. Oops, I've got the paper tear a little bit because I'm so close, but it'll be all right. So I'm just going to do big stitches, so I don't mind. Um, but I just want to celebrate the process and the story by honouring the back of the work, which we usually hide. And um, now I can tell you why I had to pause the camera, because I went to take a picture of the front for the little introductory screen. And not to trick you or anything, I absolutely had no intention of, you know, that is not why. Um, but I wanted you to, and of course some of you will watch this video and then go and do the piece, so, so you will have it in mind. But I know many of you pause the video when I've told you about supplies and then stitch along with me. So, f at least for those people, I um, like the idea that you might have been stitching without realising that this was going to happen. It's a little bit, you know... If you have in mind how a piece is going to look when it's finished, it's like having in mind how a story is going to end. Um, that was my thinking anyway. So I thought if I did it like this and um, made the photo of the front of the work, then it would make the exercise more, more, more real, more authentic for those of you who've stitched along with me. 
those of you who haven't, those of you who have watched and then are going to go and stitch it later, please try and keep, you know, in mind the, the spirit of the exercise while you're stitching and all the things I was saying about not worrying about the back and jumping your thread from one place to another. And it wasn't about being deliberately messy, it was just about letting go of that feeling that the back has to be neat and, you know, all that. So I'm just going to finish that off there like that. I haven't done a dangle for ages, have I? I'm not sure it's right down at the bottom, but shall we give it a dangle? Just to really, really um, emphasise its beauty. Excuse me, getting my beads in. We have it's going to come out the bottom of the book, so I don't want something gi huge as my daughter used to say. I want just something little that will do, that'll do big, pardon me, that'll do pig, that's a little silver bead. I'm just going to thread that on there and let it dangle slightly. I don't mind if it dangles out of the book slightly. Just do a loop and then do another back stitch just to secure it. There we go. Cut it off. Excuse my arm, excuse the noisy tin. And there is my back story. And um, that's all I'm going to write. Well, I'm going to do the... Oh, sorry, head butted you. Always when I come in to write, the choice is pull it towards me and then you can't see, or head butt you. You choose. <laughs> Uh, the 22nd of the 4th, 2024. I'll sign it because I'm proud of it. I'll sign it over here because there's a bit of cloth in the way there. K3 and Kiss. And up at the very, very top here, or maybe on the facing page, maybe on the facing page, I'm just going to write the word as one word. Backstory. If you want to look up quotes about stories or, you know, write more words or so on, obviously that's um, that's something you can do. Um, but yeah, there we go. There's my backstory. And I, I, I must say, I, I love that to look at. That's maybe my favourite piece in the whole book so far, this side of it. I know I might be a weirdo, but that's genuinely how I feel. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that exercise. Um, I'm so looking forward to seeing what you do with it. Um, and thank you so much for watching. And um, I hope at least some of you will be back next week. Sorry. For more Cloth Tales. Bye bye.